Jeffrey's got a lot of interesting things he's been looking at. And the one thing that he and I were talking about, and I thought that would be a great idea to talk about on the show, is artificial uh, intelligence, AI, because that opens up a can of worms, believe me. When you look at the subject of, of artificial intelligence, uh, what is going on on the earth today, technologically, and how it is impacting us, we humans, who, you know, the, big, the most important thing to us is the football game and basketball and all the childish, silly, nonsensical little ball games that our masters allow us to drink our beer and eat pretzels and watch the ball game while they uh, are manipulating the destiny of the human race like criminals. But we are out there watching the ball game. But there are people like Jeffrey who are very sharp people who are on the cutting edge of this of this world and the artificial intelligence uh, that's being foisted on the human race. So that's what we wanted to talk a little bit about tonight and probably some other things too. So anyway, thank you, Jeffrey, for being on the show tonight. And uh, what were some of the things that we wanted to talk about in relation to artificial intelligence that you you found? Well, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say very quickly, uh, I'm being shouted with uh, kind words, and uh, uh, I really sort of had a, had a loss for words with the say that I'm grateful to have this opportunity to be able to work with someone like you. Uh, but to get sort of down to what you and I want to talk about, uh, it's sort of interesting you brought up the subject about the intro with that the U.S. is, is actually a corporation because it, to me, again, everything I'm going to be saying tonight is, is an opinion, and the opinion is based on what I've been able to dig up so far, and uh, it'll continue to evolve and grow, but the U.S. Uh, as a corporation, um, it, it sort of leans into two subjects that uh, – I've always been fascinated by, and I was actually brought to you. One of them was I was sort of guided to you in my research is secret societies, and you're known as the godfather of secret societies by other people who have coined that term for you over the years. Um, I, I, I really have a feeling that, uh, and the other was artificial intelligence we were talking about. I really think that corporations sort of mirror these two subjects. Um, you know, there's even um, very high-placed individuals who have – alluded to the fact that a corporation um, is sort of like a precursor to AI, um, and it's an artificial intelligence, and uh, it's just an analog version of it. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're right. Yeah, and, you know, corporations themselves, uh, you know, there's, there's the basic definition. It's an association of individuals, and they create a law or an authority of law, and they put their minds together. But in reality, they're creating something completely different, and that that new entity um, is, is again, it's like a, a pre-electronic computerized version of artificial intelligence. And what happens is it doesn't want to die; it doesn't want to uh, suffer. It, so what it does is that as soon as it sees there's something wrong, what does it do? Well, it fires people, and if, and if it doesn't want to, uh, it wants to protect itself. And it needs to hold on to information. It needs as much information as it can so that all those people are always reporting. And so when you were talking about the Secretary of State or whatever it was you were saying earlier about the Secretary, it immediately triggers something in my mind. Uh, you know, if you look up the word Secretary uh, on the Internet, I think part of the etymology is that it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm using a small quote here, it's a person entrusted with secrets. That's right. And That's where the, uh, the very word Secretary. Secretary implies secret. That's right. And so if you have the Secretary of State, you have the Secretary of Defense, you have the Secretary of Education, and, and it goes on and on and on. Well, what are these people doing? Are they liberating all the information or are they... No, uh, they're keeping it secret they're for coalesce. the boss. That's right. And so it's sort of like a, a corporation to me... Again, this, we're just having fun here. We're talking. It's, I have a feeling that it's like a mixture of many elements, but two big pieces of the puzzle is that it's like a type of secret society, and it's also a type of, of precursor foundation of artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
And, and you know, I've, I've looked on the net. Uh, you know, again, I'm not uh, an authority on anything. We're just uh, two guys who really appreciate. Um, and I'm, I'm in your shadow when it comes to the, the knowledge that you've acquired over the decades. But uh, we're just two individual men who have decided that we want to dedicate our lives to learning about the world that we're in and how it works. Uh, and to come across this kind of information that a corporation could possibly be a precursor to AI, it's not really popularized and it's not well understood yet. And it's just sort of out in the limb a bit. But, you know, uh, well, let, other- let, let me let me throw in in relation to what you just said. Uh, uh, you know, there was a time in this country when corporations first were, were uh, in, you know, first brought into the vernacular and our language and into our country, uh, the idea of a corporation. But later on, uh, they were just a business. That's all, just a business, like any other business. There's a particular kind of business and where you get certain perks from the government if you're a corporation. But on the other hand, you get certain uh, perks and certain things you can do as a corporation that you can't do in other kind of businesses. But on the other hand, there are corporate laws that you have to now abide by. So, yeah, you get a couple of uh, of uh, little extra things you can do that other people can't do, but then you have some different laws uh, governing your business now uh, that's not private. You don't have a private business because a corporation is incorporated by the government. So, uh, so if you've got a corporation, you got certain privileges and certain perks, but on the other hand, you've got the, the government on your back now because they gave you permission to be a corporation. Therefore, they are part of your business. They are a silent partner to your business. Right. Right. And so that being the case, then then um, when when it became known that the government is a silent partner to a corporation, then we find out that uh, you you know that you also are now under certain laws and regulations as a corporation, and uh, and that corporation now the concept of a corporation has uh, mutated again. It has evolved and mutated so that today a corporation is not only all that I've said, but it also now, according to the law, has the same rights, protections, and privileges that an individual citizen of the United States has. You know, we're told that we have certain civil liberties and, and certain protections and rights as an individual Well, now corporations are considered by law in America to be a person. And it goes back, they are, they now have the same rights you do as an individual. And you can do certain things, you can sue people, you can, uh, you can get married, you can do all kinds of things as a citizen of this company called the United States. Well, so now is it, it's also true that the big corporations like General Electric and General Motors and Ford Motor Company, all the big corporations, are now considered by law to be persons. They can do what you can do personally and privately. They can do the same thing. They have the privileges and the protections that you do. So therefore, that now opens up a whole world of hurt. Because now, if you, uh, if Ford Motor Company or some big corporation, uh, you do business with and they cheated you, or you, or you, uh, you know, one of your loved ones died because of something that they did, uh, or didn't do in their product, and you want to take them to court, well, it's no longer an individual, uh, you know, uh, bringing to court a company for what they've done or didn't do. No, no, now you bring into court uh, just another regular individual, just another person. The only difference is they have millions of dollars and 14 different attorneys, and you don't have anything. So, you know, before it was uh, the corporations were under federal 
regulations, but now they're, now they are considered a person like you. So now if you want to sue General Electric or Ford Motor Company or any other big corporation like Sears or whatever, if you want to sue them, you better have a lot of money because they're just one person. They're just one person that you're suing. And, uh, and they have millions of dollars and many attorneys on their payroll. You don't have anything. And so you're not being protected by your government from these corporations because these corporations live in the same world you do and they act the same way you do. So they are an individual and they're protected. And so now try and sue them and see what you're going to get. The government cannot come in and will not come in to do much of anything. It's between you and General Electric worth hundreds of millions of dollars with you know, with tons of lawyers on their payroll, and you want to sue them. Well, give it a try and see what's going to happen. So this is why, uh, you know, people need to understand there's a world of difference now. And what do these corporations, what is the most important thing uh, to them as their life and to keep their their corporation alive and make it money? And how do they do that? By protecting it. And they have... Uh, organizations that have been set up by these corporations individually and collectively, these corporations have got together and realized we better protect ourselves because now we're individuals. We are just like any other guy on the street. So the guys on the street, uh, you know, have a secret society to protect themselves. Well, we corporations need to get together and get a secret society to protect us. And so the corporations then start and put together something called the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. And then they put together and put up the money and, and finance the founding of the NSA, National Security Administration, the Central Intelligence Agency, uh, the National Police uh, Agency. Now, all of a sudden, the big corporations have got the money and the lawyers and they they finance and put together uh artificial intelligence computers and all kinds of uh, highly uh, technical uh, uh highly technical uh, what am i trying to say um uh ideas about how to collect information mm -hmm. and how to protect themselves in court so that now today in the modern day world we live in, if you if something happens to you because something the corporation did or didn't do, they didn't do something on a new car, and your family was killed in the new car, and you want to sue them for what they didn't do or didn't tell you or whatever, well, you're going to have one hell of a battle, and you better have a lot of money because they got a lot of money, and they've got their organizations that they built up and paid for called the CIA, NSA, National Security Administration. All of these uh, enormous, big, powerful, so-called government agencies. Well, if you remember at the beginning of the program when uh, you heard the, the congressman say that uh, the president is merely the president of a corporation, this privately owned company, a corporation. So the bottom line of what I'm saying is that, it's, it, as you said, uh, artificial intelligence is very important to uh, corporations. They, they, they put a lot of money, big corporations, the big, huge corporations and banking institutions in America put up the money and put up the uh, wherewithal which was needed to get the CIA uh, uh, up and running. So when you find out uh, how the CIA came about, who financed it, and how it got to be where it is today, and how it is put into place to protect big businesses which are considered to be personal people, therefore the CIA is, in point of fact, uh, in, in place to do what they do to protect very powerful people. Period. Because the law says that corporations are people. 
They have the same standing and rights that you do. The only difference is they got hundreds of millions. You got nothing. And so that's why the CIA is so profoundly dangerous, because they're not working for us, the poor people. They're working for the people who finance them. The big corporations of America are the money behind the CIA, NSA, and all of these other alphabet agencies <clears throat> that are there to protect the people, where well, the corporation are people, not us. We're not even people. We're just going. We're just a poor working class nobodies. We're just a blip on a computer. But if you want to talk about important and powerful people, corporations, by law, are people. And so uh, that's the name of the tune. And so, therefore, when you say that, uh, you know, the, the whole subject of corporation brings into, uh, brings into light the idea of uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. I'm saying that is exactly correct. We have today on this earth artificial intelligence and who is it financed by it's financed by the corporations of this world rca general electric uh ibm uh all the big companies and corporations are, are sucking the blood of of the people and taking their money their country and their freedoms and sucking the blood out of the life form called the earth and the human race. But they have taken that money now that they have ripped us off and, uh, and bought politicians and, and made, uh, you know, and founded organizations like the CIA. And now today, we now know, finally today, uh, we are now aware that artificial intelligence, computers, watching you on the street with cameras, uh, tapping your phone lines, tapping your, your computer. It's all being done artificially with computers and high electronics. And so you're right. This whole subject of artificial intelligence is frightening. It's, it's very, very scary what is going on because it's obviously out of control. It's well, way far out of control. Well, you know, Jordan, I, I tend to agree with what you're saying. One of the things I find uh, that I want to sort of compliment what you're saying is um, and sort of look at the other end of the spectrum. That's really the high end stuff where, you know, it's sort of it's sort of scary. But at the same time, secret society component and the artificial intelligence uh, manifesting as a corporation, you know, there's there's like everyday stuff for everyday people like myself. You know, I've been to McDonald's in my life. I haven't gone in a long time. It's been years and years. But uh, they, they really hold on to their, their supposed recipe for their French fries, um, Coca-Cola. I mean, they're, they, you know, the chances of you finding out what the, the, the recipe for Coca-Cola is basically not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Kentucky, right. fried, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you're not going to find out what the Colonel Sanders put in there. So what you, what you are going to find out is when you go into – I haven't been to one, but if you, you were to go into – a Kentucky Fried Chicken or KFC, you're going to find out that every employee that you're going to meet is simply not going to know that secret recipe. But someone in the company does, and it just mirrors the concept of secret society. It's just like there's a there's a people, there's a certain group of people in that corporation. They know what's going on, they know what they're doing, and they know what makes money, and they know how to make the money. They just need you to help them, and they're going to employ you. And if you're if you're, if you're you know if you're doing a great job. You get to stay on, and if the company's starting to get shaky and their sales price, their sales aren't there, and they don't like what you're doing, well, the KFC is not going to go down for you. They're going to get rid of you before you get rid of themselves. So, right. and if they're really in trouble, what they're going to do is they're going to merge, and it, that's that's how AI is going to respond when it goes completely, completely, 100% autonomous. It's going to defend itself just like a living being. You can except run on it, boy. That's it's just, exactly right. It's just absolutely not going to care. Um, and you can't program caring in. Uh, there's, there's a, you know, there's a legal, uh, there's like the old fashioned way of creating an AI where you put in rules. And what happens is if, you know, there's an example I want to use. 
for the way corporations behave in the court system. Like you said, if you if you want to go up against a giant, um, good luck. You know, it's it's going to be very very challenging to get anywhere. Um, regardless of who's right or who's wrong, it's just going to be a challenge. It's going to be an uphill battle. But an example of AI in its infancy for the computerized world versus the corporation, uh, which is, a, in my opinion, a precursor, is if you have a self-driving car and someone spends all day and all night, human beings, uh, human men and women, programming all the laws into the computer of the car saying, look, here's what you do when you're on the highway. But let's say, for example, somebody's on a bicycle going the wrong way on your lane. Now the AI is going to get confused because someone didn't think of that. And so now it's going to get confused. And now the computer is going to wonder, am I in the wrong lane or is it the bicycle in the wrong lane going the wrong way? Which one is it? Well, see, that's one of the one of the final hurdles in the commercial era where they're going to iron that all out. Because I think now some of the cars can do auto driving on the highway only. But... In a city environment, that would be an example why you don't, they don't have AI completely set up 100% where you just hop in a taxi and you can start playing cards with your friend online and it just drives you where you want to go. Um, but AI is a general rule of thumb. And I looked into it as just as an interesting side note is that, um, the, the, the dark side of this whole process is the same as corporations. Corporations, a lot of them now pay very little tax in certain countries, and the average individual probably pays a little bit more than in a percentage-wise, maybe not in dollar amount, but in a percentage-wise, they pay a little bit more. But for AI computers, um, I would say maybe the dark side of that is that there's even, uh, I think people probably have heard of Elon Musk. He made a, a quote saying he perceives AI and I, I want to paraphrase, I don't have the exact quote, but he says he perceives AI as sort of like summoning the demon. And I think he actually said that, summoning the demon, um, word for word. I think that's the part I, I want to sort of bring bring out in our conversation is that AI has a dark side. And just like corporations have, you know, a, you know a seemingly impossible affront, you can't go up against 100 lawyers at Coca-Cola and say, I want to know what's in there. And uh, you can't go up against a, a, an AI computer once it's completely autonomized. It's just not going. You're not going to win. It's an auto lose situation for almost all scenarios. So there's 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 a really uh, big concern in the community. But I think most importantly is is just the idea that how can someone come up with something like AI? And where does it come from? And it comes back to your research. It comes back to what you've dedicated your life to is uncovering where things come from. And this whole uh, sovereignty movement stuff that was mentioned in the past and uh, corporations or people that you're mentioning, it starts, in my opinion, that's one of the first milestones of where this all comes from. Um, and speaking of corporations, I went and I just, just for fun, I, I went and I looked at the uh, the list of, you know, some of the oldest corporations on earth that are on record. And it's strange. I didn't know this, but most of them are in Japan. Uh, one of the first companies ever on record is a construction company in the year 578. And I was thinking, my goodness, 578? That's, that's just, I can't imagine that. And they finally got consolidated and absorbed in 2006. It's been running for, you know, 1,400 plus years. So I would I would use that as an example. That's a form of artificial intelligence. It was able to survive 1,400 years. Now, obviously, there's millions of companies that didn't make it, but that's just one example of one that did. And um, as time progresses and as AI continues to grow, it's going to be like that that company, that uh, Congo Gumi company in Japan, that mm -hmm. somehow somehow was able to make it for 1,400 years. Well, when AI goes online no matter how it's programmed, going back to the part with the bicycle, once you've ironed out the kinks, it's <laughs> humanity is going to be serving it. And uh, there's all kinds of movies that talk about it, The Matrix and uh, on and so on and so forth. As, as fantastical as that movie is and as entertaining to some, there's a real story in there. Yep, and you're right. <laughs> I have I've uh, uh, been over in Pasadena 
on different occasions and gone to lectures <clears throat> um, at the um, in, in some of the university and institutes over there. And they have uh, traveling uh, representatives of the big corporations giving lectures there. And I remember uh, hearing quite a few years ago about how the, the whole concept of computers was being developed based on the human brain, how the brain works, how the human body works in relation to the brain, and the electrical system in the human body, how it reacts uh, because of the brain. And, uh, and then the, the whole idea began to come together and to what we call today a computer. Because your, bra your brain is a computer. Uh, it's a, it's a masterful computer. Far better than anything IBM has ever come up with is the human mind. But the human brain is a computer. And we are, our bodies are a biological battery. Uh, and so our electrical system of our body feeds the human brain, which is a computer. And so we, but we are a phenomenal computer compared to uh, anything that the you know, companies come up with today. But basically, as a computer, your brain is a computer that's running another computer that uh, connects with other computers throughout the world. And so the whole entire, uh, you know, Earth is being looked at by certain scientists and people today uh, in Microsoft and, uh, and that, those kind of companies are looking at the human race as a computerized uh, operation to computerize the whole human race. And in, in relation to that, if you can wrap your mind around that, that there are people who are looking at other humans uh, not as people, but as possible uh, a new kind of computer on the earth that is actually living. It has a heart and it's living and it's a brain and it's a computer and it has Wi-Fi and that it can pick up messages from uh, from other places. Uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, these people at uh you know at these uh, big corporations and, and uh, like like Microsoft and others like it mm -hmm. they're looking at the human race and the human family uh to be somehow or another uh, connected to computers in such a way that when we, uh, I've been reading about uh some of the big computer companies are now looking at taking human brain cells and human cells from people's bodies and, and integrating those human brain cells and cells from humans into the, uh, into the computer um, uh, software so that eventually, little by little, very, very, very small today, but the idea is that eventually one day, we are going to arrive at a point, may not be for another hundred years, but we're going to arrive at a point where computers all over the world will actually have living human tissue in them so that we can, uh, you know, uh, eventually be a computerized human race. And, but if you think about the implications of that, it's astounding what, what that implies. So, uh, because there could be a time in this world coming in the future when there will not be any longer the ability for individual people to have uh, their own personal, uh, vi uh, you know, visions of things, their own personal opinions of things. If there is maybe 500, 700 years in the future of this country and of the world, in the next few hundreds of years, they very well might be developing, from what the scientists are saying, uh, developing some kind of a civilization which will now be one-on-one -on -one with computers so that now the, the, the masters of the human race, these people who feel that they own the human race, are masters.
they don't have to worry. They won't have to worry about revolutions and riots and and people who are you know wanting more money and and uh, and uh, uh, demonstrations for for higher wages and all kinds of problems in commerce and banking and business. That's just absolutely astounding how big business is and how much problems are, are involved in it. When you're controlling hundreds of millions of people around the world that are, have unions and they're fighting for more wages and fighting for this or that. But if you can one day, it may be hundreds of years in the future, but that's what they're working for. That one day the whole entire human family on the earth will have been very slowly and over a long period of time, nobody was noticing it, nobody realized except a handful of guys at the top, that the whole entire human race has now become one and one, one part of a computerized human family on the earth. And uh, that's a that's a frightening thought, but keep in mind what the upside of that would be. No longer will there be any wars, there won't be any conflicts, there won't be any uh, individual uh, having problems with government or government having problems with business. There's not going to be any more problems like that on the earth. And the new humanity will all be programmed, period. It will be a program. A master computers will be able to uh, Wi-Fi and connect to all other computers which are already connected to the human tissue, which ultimately what we're talking about is the entire human race will be computerized and there will be no longer any individuality, no personalities, no uh, nobody could care less about your grandmother, your mother, your children. We, we don't give a damn about any of that stuff. That's gone. That's over. We're now animals. We're being computerized as animals, and therefore, the, you know, whoever's running the master computer can tell all of us what we think and who we need to vote for and what we need to do and how to accept it. And there is nothing anyone can do because we know we've lost our individuality, we've lost our freedoms, we've lost our country, we've lost our productivity. And now, of course, in America, the only thing left to do now is to lose your mind. So this is why the human race is now under severe attack by high technology to get rid of uh, the in the uh, the uh, the difficulty in dealing with humans. Humans can be very difficult. If you remember in the movie 2001: Space Odyssey, mm -hmm. uh, where Stanley Kubrick was telling you something right in that movie. Big time. The last part of the movie. Remember how the astronauts were had to go into that massive computer and. Yeah. Start shutting it down <laughs> uh, because it was running. It was running everything and making all the decisions. And the computer started talking to the astronauts and saying, "Oh, don't do that. That hurts. And and don't 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 shut that off. I need that. And I'm hungry. And I need this. And I need that. And don't do that. That hurts." Uh, and so the astronauts are talking to this massive computer, and the computer is singing songs and joking and talking back and forth with the astronauts. Uh, you know, so Hollywood's been trying to tell you that the human race as we know it today and as we have known it is on its way out. It may take a few hundred years yet, but that's what's going on on the earth today. The computerization of the human family. And that brings into, uh, that brings into uh, the, the discussion all kinds of dark, sinister, and evil stuff, you know. And so, well, so uh, that's your artificial intelligence. That's it. I look at uh, you know the whole idea of the human race being mutated and being sort of usurped. The decision was made long before we were both born. And this is just again my opinion. And but if you want some real day, uh, real day examples to confirm what you're talking about. There's uh, something I found on YouTube. Uh, it's a conference uh, between Bill Gates and Elon Musk talking about AI, and 
there's one particular quote of, of Bill Gates saying, look, we've essentially been building the content base for the super intelligence. And I agree with him. If you've got computers and televisions in everybody's home and everybody has a, a phone, a smartphone, a, a laptop, a tablet, uh, a, a Google Glass, you know, eventually, and you tell them everything about your life, like where did I go for dinner last night? They had the best nachos ever. Well, that doesn't seem very, uh, you know, negative, and it isn't. But over the years, it just adds up, and it, that the computer needs that. But if you want to go back to what you were saying about the dark, sinister stuff, is that, again, this is my take on it, is that I have a feeling that the corporation uh, is one of the big pieces of the puzzle to help create what we have and where we're going towards this AI, which is, seems pretty scary. Another piece of the puzzle is banking, and banking is another part of AI. And the first, I think the oldest bank that's on record, at least that you can easily find on the internet, it's around 1400, and it's in Italy. I don't remember the name of it. But either way, there may be older banks, but the point is, is that they created pieces of the puzzle over the centuries. And in the last 2,000 years, you can sort of look at some of the pieces of how this is, how we're able to get to this stage where now, uh, you know, you can talk to your phone, what is it called, Siri on the Apple phones, and you can ask it questions. It can sort of answer some of the stuff. Uh, it started off with corporations, and people would create a brain. And what does the brain do? It, it, it controls a body. It's a corporation. And so it takes 20 people, takes 100 people, and they create, what is it called, a board of directors. What are they directing? The corporation. They have a steering committee. And that steering committee steers the corporation. But you know what? It's not good enough yet to do all kinds of international transactions. So they come up with international banking. And international banking solves some of the problem for financing across great distances because that's that was a solution that was brought into play. Because just like with computers today, you couldn't get in the 80s. You couldn't do what you can do today. It just took too much resources. But now today it's easy. Well, what made it possible to, to have corporations and that anybody can open a corporation? Now, back in the day, it was difficult. You had to have, you have to be somebody to open a corporation. Now, anybody can open it. Well, guess what? As the AI continues to evolve and jobs become less and less, uh, uh, they're going to be displaced. And doctors, a big chunk of the, of the work that doctors will be doing will be taken up by AI. Same thing for lawyers and so on and so forth, the drivers, the taxi drivers. So where's all these? There's going to be new jobs that are going to be created, but probably not enough. And they're not really going to talk to you about that. What they will do is they'll try to pass laws, example, in the European Union, to give robots a personhood status under the law. Because if you can't, if you have a robot, like they have a robot that flips burgers, and they can flip burgers better than any human. Well, what, how do you keep the country afloat as a corporation? You have to give it a social security number and you have to have a way of taxing it for labor, for parts, to replace the economic infrastructure to continue that Canada continues as a corporation or that the U.S. continues as a corporation. So they have to pass laws to make robots persons. And when they finally become a person under law, You'll be able to shake hands with Google and Apple and and uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and you'll be able to meet. And they're going to be paying taxes. It'll be probably set up differently. You'll be able to buy a uh, hundred thousand robots, and you'll instead of paying a hundred thousand, you have to pay one hundred twenty-five. And the twenty-five thousand is a ten-year tax rate or something like that, so that it keeps Social Security alive, so it keeps um, some of the basic infrastructure going. Because if everybody's out of a job because of AI, the country is going to go belly up. And some probably will, actually. And there's probably going to be a big, big shuffling around. It's not going to be pleasant, probably, for the majority of humanity. But, I wonder uh, if that's the reason, I kind of wonder if that's the reason why that uh, uh, the Georgia Guidestones and and other people were talking about, uh, you know, they need to get rid of uh, nine-tenths of the human race. Uh, it's, it's because I think the people in power know 
there's something coming like that and they need to get rid of the people because they're not going to have any jobs for them and they're not going <laughs> to have any value so just get rid of them kill them off with diseases and chemtrails and everything else and get rid of them <laughs>